Hi everyone and welcome back to another card making video. Today I'm going to share three of my favorite color combinations with Distress Oxide inks when it comes to full projects. For my demonstration today I'm going to work with mixed media paper. This is off-white, it takes mediums beautifully and since today I'm planning to work with water I decided to work with this type of paper. You can do a similar uh, thing with watercolor paper as well. Now I'm going to share my favorite color combos and I'm going to play with them by using the smooshing technique but any technique that you decide to go with when you use these color combos is going to work beautifully for fall projects. So for my first color combo I'm going with Spiced Marmalade, Wild Honey and Mustard Seed. This is going to give you a yellowish result. I'm going to smooth the ink on my mat and then I'm going to spray some water. When you see some bubbles, water bubbles to form on top of your mat, then you can smooth the paper on top. Now I'm going to stop here. I'm going to use my heat gun and make sure that this layer is completely dry. And since this is uh, for fall, I don't want those colors to be super clean. I am going to introduce a little bit of brown, that's vintage photo. And I'm just going to smooth it here and there in different areas to make it look dirtier. And I'm going to finish this off by adding some splashes with the remaining ink that I have on my mat. Now this can be a background where you can stick on top a focal point and add a sentiment. However, I'm going to use it as pattern paper and I will end up with a project at the end. For my next color combo, I'm going with Rustic Wilderness, Crushed Olive and a little bit of Vintage Photo to make it look dirtier. So this is my greenish color combo. You saw the yellowish one in the beginning. And um, again, I'm using the exact same technique for creating my background. I'm going to smooth the paper on top after spraying the ink with a little bit of water. You can add more water if you feel you have to. Don't worry if you don't like the first layer. You can always work on top of it to make it look better or to your liking. This is just the first layer. Make sure that you dry the first layer completely and then you can go ahead and add more colors on top. Here I felt I needed more of that lighter olive color. That's why I'm going to smoosh some on my pad and add a little bit of that on top of my first layer to lighten it up a bit. The idea here is to have a good variation of colors with lighter and darker areas and even splashes because I'm planning to stamp leaves on top of it and the more variation I will end up having, the better the leaves are going to look. So here is a close-up look at the first two backgrounds that I created. I'm going to leave them aside to dry and let's move on to the third color combination this time I'm playing with orange shades and I'm going with Crackly Campfire which is the perfect color for a fall and Vintage Photo just to make it a little bit dirtier and to add that color variation that I want with lighter and darker areas. Again I apply the first layer, I'm going to make sure that this is completely dry and then I'm going to work on top of it a little bit more to make it look more interesting. Again I'm going to add some splashes and let it dry. Now of course remember that you can use these color combos that I'm sharing today with other techniques so you can end up with a completely different look and feel where you have a nice smooth blending. Now I created those backgrounds to show you some of my favorite color combinations when it comes to fall, however I don't want them to go to waste, that's why I'm going to turn them into a project. For that I am going to do some stamping, I am going to stamp leaves for um, that I'm using a new stamp set by Simon Says Stamp from the September release. These are called lined leaves. If you already have any leaf stamps in your stash or even dyes of leaves, you can definitely go ahead and do this project. Now I'm going to pick some of the leaves and going to stamp them on all of my pattern papers. I'm going to use them as pattern papers. I'm stamping them with black ink and I'm going to stamp a bunch of them on each of these backgrounds since I can use these leaves on other projects as well. I'm just repeating the same process for all of my backgrounds and then you can use the matching dies to cut out all the leaves. I don't have the matching dies so I'm going old fashioned and I'm going to use my scissors and fuzzy cut around the leaves. These leaves look stunning with all that color variation with lighter and darker areas and they are great for any fall project. If you want you can go ahead and deepen up some of the colors on the leaves. 
and I just chose to go with my finger, which is quite funny with all the blending tools that we lately have. Now that I have the focal points for my card, I'm just going to create a simple background. For that, I'm working with this dark brown cardstock. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine with an embossing folder. So you can see here the panel is slightly smaller than the standard card, just to end up with a frame at the end. And this is a folder from the latest release by Simon's Stamp that gives a lovely, interesting look at the background, but at the same time it keeps it subtle. So the leaves that I'm going to stick on top, they are going to be the focal point and the actual star of the card. I'm using foam squares at the back of the leaves and I'm just going to line them up at the center. And this is where you can really appreciate the color combinations the moment you place those leaves on top of that dark brown cardstock they really pop. And uh, I'm going to add some splashes which are going to add some shine on the card. You can go either with gold or copper, anything would work for this uh, color combination. And since I couldn't decide, I actually went with both of them. You can even add a sequence or gems instead. I used a craft card base, which is 4 quarter by 5 and a half to stick this on top and I added a sentiment. Here are some close-up photos on the finished cards for today. I hope this video was helpful as I shared three of my favorite color combinations for fall. Links to everything I used can be found down below. Don't forget to leave me a comment to like the video and I'll see you all next time.